Hello friends and welcome to the Plant Quest podcast. This week Joe and I are going to be discussing different ways which you can affordably and sustainably grow your houseplant collection and spilling a little dirt in the meantime. We also get pretty chatty and conversational on this week's episode so I've included a few of those outtakes right at the end for those of you who want to stick around for that. Thanks for joining us! So we've been having a lot of discussions this week about the affordability of gardening and houseplant collecting as a hobby because it's so easy to get carried away with the high of getting a plant and growing it up or seeing it flourish after you bring it home and like you know the happiness that having like those plants in your house bring you or going outside and seeing your garden like flowering or fruiting it's easy to just kind of snowball from there and, you know, continue to add plants to basket or, you know, you just, you go in a home base even and you just went for some brackets for your house and you come away with three new plants, which is a familiar story to us. Um, or you end up on plant websites like me and you just keep adding stuff to the shopping basket and then you end up with far too many plants to even, well, fit on your shelves, to be honest. And, um, you know, it is it is a nice high to chase, kind of like filling up your house and feeling the fulfilment of everything getting a little bit greener and everything feeling a little bit fresher and a bit newer. But it's like so easy to be priced out of stuff that when you're looking online, especially, you know, you feel obligated to have X, Y, Z plant or kind of flower even and to kind of like feel like you're a valid member of like the plant community, I suppose. Yeah, there are definitely plants like that. Like, I feel like, th I mean, the Monstera Deliciosa is like a standard sort of like, oh yeah, this is, if, if you're going to buy a plant, you should get this one first. And and then it's everyone's like oh, okay good start you got a monstera but where's your variegated one yeah it's it's like oh gosh and then like when you when you get in the hashtags or you start following like these accounts oh, monstera monday monster hashtag monster philodendron thursday friday oh fitonia friday it could be fitonia friday yeah we, we could do i'm gonna start that well. one <laughs> yeah and like to get caught up in that craze and you know it's like with any hobby i guess like you kind of you you're just constantly chasing that high and t chasing that fulfillment but like to what end and one of the things that we've been kind of chatting about this week um is how we are able to do that affordably and also kind of sustainably as well um well, to an extent to an extent obviously sustainably that... in regards to like not importing plants from 3000 miles away yeah, 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 yeah. Or like, um, keeping them, or fitting, or fitting all the plants on our windowsill. Fitting all the, yeah. Well, there's two types of sustainable, I guess. Yeah, like being able to stay, sustain the habitat in your own home, but also like reducing your carbon footprint when you are purchasing plants from uh, nurseries or online, because or because a, the co the you know the the air miles it takes to get these plants to like this country in the first place, but also like like we were talking earlier today and um, Joe kind of um, mentioned something that I didn't even think of because I assumed all the plants that we buy on like plant websites or buy from nurseries or garden centers were all kind of grown in in foreign nurseries or in the Netherlands or, or wherever. But you mentioned that like, especially like certain species like orchid, which are really hard to just propagate, they're like often just pinched straight from the wild. Yeah, not in all cases and yeah, it's really difficult to know as to whether the website you're purchasing from is legit, which is why you should always do a lot of research before actually going in and purchasing a bunch of plants, especially when you're ch chasing these like Instagram highs mm. in that like these plants aren't common in cultivation, potentially like, for example, the Monstera Oblica. It's not common in cultivation. It's quite a slow grower because it has massive fenestration holes in the leaves mm. and that isn't commonly taken from the wild but like it's mostly applies to orchids and cacti which are like incredibly slow growers 
and it's easier for like some guy or person in Indonesia or Brazil or some Latin America, even Africa. Tropical, African, subtropical yeah, countries. Yeah, 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 yeah. To just take them from the wild than it is to grow it on for five years, 10 years, 15 years, and then sell it for a fraction of the price because you immediately by taking those items from the wild skip the whole cultivation process you skip the whole like like the cost of all your like the rent for like however many years the glass house it takes to sort of like cultivate these specimens mm-hmm. or the lighting the like cost of staff all that all that but stuff not to mention like the food and like the substrate and yeah, 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 like yeah of course it just you know, I mean, the, at times by X amount of years. Yeah, so the easiest way to tell as to whether you're buying like a a plant which has been harvested from the wild or one which has been cultivated is one, the plant website will have like a plant passport attached to it or like they'll like say in the comments or description or whatever. Um, it'll be a legitimate sort of like business. And two, like plants taken from the wild are generally more beaten up than those which are in cultivation because like they're often raised in glass houses where they have no wind so there's no sort of like mechanical damage from the wind Mm. there's no abrasion on the stems there's not going to be as much pest damage so like if you get a cacti which is like all beaten up i mean (laughs) i feel like every cactus in morrison's is just looks like it's had a rough life it's had a rough go (laughs) i mean i was gonna I I i was gonna say like yeah, I mean, it all has to go through the postal service, and him is it isn't exactly nice. Oh my gosh, yeah, it's a bad day if when you buy a plant online and it's like, here's your Hermes tracking number. It's like anything but Hermes. <laughs> <laughs> but valid. Yeah. That that aside, but yeah, I mean, the main subject we want to talk about is cost cutting. Cost cutting. And I'm, I am the scrimp king, and yeah. I learned from the best growing up in a low income household with the. With a very clever mother. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, um, you know, without going into it too much, like our kind of living and working situation is that we're comfortable, but we're not in a position where we can, you know, import or purchase lovely tropical, subtropical plants from online as and when we'd like them. And also, because we live in such a small apartment, we can't have the big, lovely plants like we can't just buy a big fiddly fig or a big monstera or something like that because we just couldn't even fit them so it's like how do we uh sort of like have the same impact on our lives as and like fulfilling of as having these plants and growing them but also like how do we make it affordable to us as sort of like as hobbyists as well um and we've been talking about this a lot this week because I found a <laughs> I, I, I have a plant wish list and I'm I'm not going through it too quickly. I'm well, okay. I'm going through it quickly. I really only started collecting plants in like April, so Yeah, I mean But I've had a wish list for like several years. I think I think that I, I think that you can um throw me some credit here because I think I've been doing it pretty thriftily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm impressed, but I see the slippery slope. It is a slippery slope, but and that's why I'm worried. For you. <laughs> that's why we wanted to kind of talk about this to show alternative routes into enjoying what can be quite an expensive hobby, and also kind of some sometimes a quite elitist hobby as well. Yeah, and it can. Yeah, it, it can also like get into that like, you know, that like mental disorder of like hoarding sort of mm. thing where people like hoard ridiculous items well like you get the hoarders with plants as well and it becomes one of these like addictions you can't just get rid of a plant or give it away yeah or let it go. Or you, yeah 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 exactly mm. like like when you see me cut back plants or even <sighs> throw them away because like it's easier to dispose of a plant than it is to like deal with the pests inside of it or like the cultural problem that it has like if mm-hmm. it's got bad leaves or whatever like, especially if it's a really common plant, which is available in home base or B&Q or whatever, Home Depot store you go to. It's just like, it ain't worth my time. Yeah. And I'm not like, no, that for Don't away. throw it away. Save it. And I'm like, yeah. It feels saving. like, for me, it feels so heartbreaking because of the emotional investment that you put into these plants. And, like, I don't think I'm being overdramatic by saying that because when you're, like, watering something and monitoring its health and its growth and 
you kind of feel responsible for it and you do feel an emotional attachment to it. I know um, a lot of people even go so far as to give their plants names and, you know, they talk to their plants and kind of they, the plants develop personalities based on how they grow and um, kind of like how, um, how they react when they're put in different places around the house and things like that. So um, it's not to me unusual to find that when you move a plant or when you put it into a different situation and it starts dying back or you just or it gets a pest even and you're like nah fuck it sling it at and um <laughs> and then I get really upset because it does make me sad um but we've kind of come to a compromise with that now um we have had a few pest problems in the flat um not too bad though no, 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 no. We haven't had like bad pests yet. We had a fungus gnat problem when we were propagating the monstera um, in sphagnum moss because that was like an incredibly hot, moist environment. We decided to propagate that in a glass vase because it was quite long and tall, and like the the stem that we purchased the cutting and the stem was like really long, and the root was like going upwards. And we thought it would be not only safer to just um, propagate it in in moss, but also um, so maybe we could be able to witness the growth of the root and we'll know when it's ready. Because that's the downside to doing it in moss over like water propagation, which is you can't see the root. Um, so that kind of developed a big old... We had a real problem with fungus gnats in the flat. To but the they're not like... They're more annoying than an inconvenient than anything else. I'm not trying to say that they're like going to eat your plants or anything. Well, I'm just I mean, saying uh, that they, they can. They do eat fibrous, really fine roots of like baby plants. They ain't exactly going to chomp down on a monstera root. No, but like it was a quality of life problem for me because during lockdown I've been working from home in the same room that all of our plants are in, and yeah. it's like these annoying no, little no, I, little, I little guys kind of floating around all day, and it was like, well, god damn it. And um, also, you said we had another problem. We had we had that. What was on the bottom of that succulent? Oh yeah, of course. Um, so we had springtails problems, and okay. their their springtails are like a little white bug which like hops around. Once you disturb it, you may have seen it at the bottom of your pots when you like hit a pot and on the floor. Oh, sorry, not on the floor. Don't smash it. <laughs> when you were at a Greek wedding and you just start smashing your house plants. Yeah. <laughs> when you just really want it to flower but it just ain't doing what you want it to do <laughs> yeah. um yeah so when when you like lightly tap your pot onto like a surface then like you might see some things crawl on the bottom sort of thing if you do have springtails they like really moist conditions a bit like scarred fly mm. or fungus gnats as you if you like to call them that mm -hmm. but they're ba they're essentially just decomposers they you actually add you can buy them for like terrariums and paludariums to sort of like make your environment bioactive mm. because they'll like decompose everything and like churn up matter for the frogs to eat and stuff like that well not not exactly but um yeah they're actually a desirable species but again they're like a, more of an annoyance than anything and if you like have your monstera or whatever plant you have on a constantly wet side you're going to see them on the surface of the soil and they but... might might yeah it's exactly it, it's but... just discomfort it's not they're not bad but i still haven't seen a springtail even though you've said we've had them well they're very minor because we make sure we we do only water you only you do such a great job watering like yeah. you, you do such a great job watering because you you've learned to notice when things are dry and you you try and water when they're dry which means that like they're not getting that complete moist pot that they love mm. they're only getting like maybe the the, the last fifth of the pot is like constantly moist but that's like mm. their only habitable area like mm. they won't survive in drier areas that's fair so yeah yeah <laughs> pests i love pests as you can see i was gonna say i feel like we'll probably go off on a pest tangent in every single uh what every pests single episode is so important record. though i mean i'm gonna quell we'll, myself yeah this we'll, is we'll, about saving money this is about saving money um and on that note like I said, um, on saving money, there are quite a few plants on my plant wish list, and not many of them are actually reasonably affordable for me to buy. So, like I did with the variegated monstera cutting that I got, whereas I, I went on Etsy and I spent a few weeks just combing Etsy with alerts up and stuff like that, keeping an eye on different shops that had 
previously sold cuttings for one to come up in a more affordable way and um, eventually I did find one that was within my budget and it looked really good. It was on the cheaper side because the leaves themselves were less variegated and this is something that I really want to highlight with plants is that like you might find that the plants that are really desirable are like the pink princesses that have like a lot of pink splotches on or like the segmented um, monsteras or the like we've got here the florida ghosts with the big white leaves and it's like that's just that stage that that plant is at in its life and it's not always going to stay like that and new leaves will create different situations and while there are like kind of ways and I know that it's kind of up for debate on whether you can tell or not how how a plant will turn out um, if you keep in mind that purchasing for example to go on with the monstera um, um, a monstera cutting that is less variegated than another one that might be even fit up to 50 pounds cheaper that the next leaf it might put on might be super variegated. Yeah, to an extent. I mean, it depends on your Monstera variety as well. The Monstera Thai constellation is a really, it's got what's called a stable variegation. So like it's going to be the same on every leaf, more or less the same. Different patterns, but the same amount. Um, the Monstera Deliciosa Albo Variegata is an unstable variegated because the, the difference is is the monstera of Alba variegata is a chimeral variegation which means it's a spore it's like a genetic mutation whereas the Thai constellation is a chemical um, variegation it's been induced like certain chemicals being put into the um the specimen to sort of like induce variegation like a like genetically modified it's part it. of its yeah 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 mm -hmm. so um anyway before we go on a massive tangent yeah i was gonna say where, where are we going with the, this what i'm trying to say is with the abu variegata and the bostigiana as well the 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 variation is unstable so it means from one leaf to the next you could go from like low variegation to high variegation high variegation to low variegation and then just like it could re what's called um revert it's called reversion so like it goes completely green and unfortunately once it's reverted it's very unlikely that it'll actually go back to being variegated so you just have to prune out the completely green leaves mm -hmm. and then let it start off so what will happen is like once you've cut off the apex of that plant which is like means the top in latin then um you will encourage like secondary hormones so you've got the auxin which is concentrated in the top of the plant and you've got the cytokinins which is concentrated in the lateral buds and by cutting off all the oxen, it encourages all the, the lateral buds to develop. Basically, if you cut the top off, it'll grow from the side instead. Yeah, TLDR. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I mean, I can, really away, maybe you can't see here, but like, for example, the newest leaf on this is like the most variegated leaf we've had yet. And that's from a, uh, a cutting that had a like a low level of variegation which made it quite affordable and you yeah know. it was like 100 pound less than every other yeah plant on the market because okay. like these plants that were selling for like 100 pound more they had like half white it's like really really great sectoral variegation well um, I, I would say even though those ones were even more expensive well like, that's yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. um whereas this had like maybe 10 20 percent and then like every leaf from there the thing is it's like i'm gonna go off and we need to have a variegation podcast obviously <laughs> but yeah to, to, you the way in which your environment mm -hmm. in your home treats the plant will affect the level of variegation as well high sunlight levels will yeah. increase the variegation so that's and that's one thing that we did just... with this one to make it i guess this can kind of tie into the value aspect of it is that um you know often it's recommended to put these plants in um like semi shade or not full sunlight because that's where they would be in the um kind of natural native environment they'd be underneath the canopy so they'd get dappled sunlight and they might be happiest and grow healthiest then we've scorched this thing with no no full no, sun. no no we have not scorched it there's we... been no physical damage of scorching on this plant because we've slowly introduced it into a full self-facing condition if it's scorched you'd see the um, okay so i don't when I say, on the leaf so calm down. Okay, okay, when okay, i sorry. say scorched i don't mean that it's physically scorched <laughs> as as in your whatever botanical term i mean like instead of putting it out in semi-shade 
we put it in a south facing window where it received full sunlight all day but we slowly acclimatized it into that position didn't we remember we had it when we first started off as cutting oh, that's true i yeah. said never put it in direct sunlight we had it on the back of the bench near the kitchen yeah and then um we started moving it after okay. a week or two what, closer and closer what i'm trying to say is we've induced i think from what you've said um from we're, what you've said about um, about variegation is that we've induced the plant into producing more variegation because it's like in this full sunlight situation. Yeah, because variegation is a protect, uh, protection against too much sunlight as well. Like it's a mechanical defense because um, the white or cream is reflecting more light. Yes. Yeah, essentially. And, yeah, essentially. Yeah. So um, that's what we did to get the best value out of that plant and just kind of by reading it around i guess like kind of reading around the science of it we have i got obsessed <laughs> we as, you can, as you can tell um <laughs> we've kind of like um increased the value of this plant like maybe five or six times almost so like or it will be once it's put on a few more leaves to from what we paid for it because we've just sort of read around what it what it needs and kind of like a, about the science of variegation as well so that's like one way to get in on the ground level of what is normally an expensive plant if you if you really want that plant and to kind of like add it to your collection and in my opinion like that's more satisfying to me to have that journey with that plant. yeah yeah for sure and rather than just have a finished result and have a really big plant I mean, sure, it, it just depends on your income. If you're like a um, footballer, you're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna care about a few hundred pounds. But well, then um, footballers listen to this podcast. You just go out and buy your yeah, you do your you do your thing. Variegated monstera, but yes. Yeah, so very jealous. Winding time, rewinding time back to my original point is. Are you sure we don't want to continue this variegation podcast? Rewinding time back to um, my original point, which was this week. I I bought some more plants. I know, but and you. How many? I bought three new plants, and I think that was... uh, no, I bought three plants. I made them into more plants, though. And Joe made them into more plants, but I needed one... permission. Um, I basically was on the hunt for one of my wish list plants, which is um, Philodendron Prince of Orange, and I found this website which had it normally, but it was out of stock. But obviously, once you're on one of these websites, you kind of continue going down that rabbit hole. And I ended up buying three plants, and two of them were ones that I'd kind of danced around buying before, but they were like, the plants, or at least one of them, the plant itself is too big for us to have in the house, and also, like, is still 20 to 30 quid for a full-size plant, and, like, buying one plant at a time at 30 quid, if that, well, no, I, I would say, I would say that's how much it is based on what I've searched, um, which is the Calathea Roseopicta, um, and I really liked it because I like the pink, and I really want a pink princess, but I refuse to pay that much for a pink princess, and they're really hard to get cuttings of as well, so, uh, I'm living my life through my Roseopicta now, <laughs> um, but instead of buying the full plant, I bought basically plugs mm. they're like plugs yeah they're plugs yeah, yeah that's and what they're, they're like basically they call them baby plants but i mean i guess they are baby plants yeah how, how they... would you how would you what would you call that in no no that plugs is the correct botanical term mm. like and um, they're called plug pants so these don't look like they've been made from cuttings yeah well, okay 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 the raffidophora tetrasperma the name just blanked in my head as I was like thinking <laughs> what on a it. name to blank <laughs> yeah so like that's definitely a cutting no yeah. doubt about it I can see the evidence of like the big stem which has been cut yeah because that's a big the the, so, the raffidophora has her, has a bigger stem than the plant actually is I think the adansonia is probably by seed yeah I think that it, the, it no... I think that both of them are seeds yeah we're yeah. looking over here and no one can see so we need to like oh right do you yeah. want to bring it over this or? is where the plants are do you want to bring like the... they're so small though <laughs> okay so uh these pots are like a lot bigger than um what the actual um size of 
the plug was, but the plugs were like about this big. And basically they ship them to you in a in a little plastic container with like the plugs and it's like a tiny bit of soil, which is just kind of like this big. And then this size plant. And you sort of, um, and you can buy them to grow. And I thought that was a great way of like starting to increase the size of your collection because this plant which at full size might be um like 20 or 30 pounds this cost four pounds um and if you don't mind spending the time and investing your time and <laughs> and being the glamorous assistant assistant yeah you it... should do the camera thing oh you want me to show it i don't know if it's going to show it on here um because it's like kind of not very bright but I think that's pretty good. I mean, you can see the pink, like the reason why it's yeah. called. And everyone knows what an Adam's Sony eye is. I don't really need to. Oh, like you say. <laughs> I think anyone watching this. Do you mean this is an oblique? It's oh yeah, it's so yes, it's an oblique. Ha <laughs> ha We got an oblique for four pounds. <laughs> um, so yeah, like you get them. They're these tiny little plugs, and you can plant them, and they're basically just cheap because there's been little labor put into getting them to the stage that they're at. Mm. So they, they, they like, and because they plant them in big trays, like hundreds and hundreds of them, that they're easy to just ship off if you want to spend the time that it takes to grow them. And we do, we don't have much space and I think they're really cute and it's a nice way to add something to your collection on a budget because you get the plant that you want and it's a baby and it's four pounds. But you gotta be careful though, because there's like, this fallacy of like the state of mind which makes you feel like you're getting a good deal and um you start off thinking oh i just need one plant and then like you find out what the postage is and you're like oh well i might as well get five or ten plants because um they're only three four five pound each or um equivalent seven dollars or whatever mm -hmm. so you think you get a great deal so you end up buying more than what you intended to i feel yeah that makes sense and it, but that, that's about holding and, yourself and, accountable really. and then going back to repeat purchase so like and these plants some of these plants go pretty fast so they can just take take over your house mm. so yeah that's something that we have to keep an eye on as well like how fast things are growing like th that philodendron that we got um so that's another one where i believe that we saved a bit of money because the plant itself was a small plant so it wasn't again you're not like buying the insta ready model of this plant well, I feel like and also it was almost all green when we purchased it yeah, and yeah, it was for sure. the like really desirable ghostly white leaves which make it which make it such a kind of like desirable plant and make it really popular and make it pop they weren't there so it was kind of like a lower price because of that and also the the greenhouse the greenhouse the garden center that we got it from um obviously only had like one or two of them because um, it was like limited stock, so we just picked it up and grabbed it. So yeah, we've mentioned this point before with the Albo Monstera Albo Variegata that we got. That like, you if you you got to do your research on the plants, and if you know that like the appearance of the plant isn't stable and might change, then you don't need to go for like the most desirable plant appearance. Obviously, you need to go for the most healthy plant appearance. You don't yes. want like some like um wet soggy stick or whatever if you're buying a cutting oh my gosh but, yeah um another factor into what you're saying um was like it, it's not just like choosing the plant which may not be the stunning white variegation that you want but it's also like doing your research i mean this is pretty standard stuff but like doing your research as to all the different suppliers that actually supply this plant mm -hmm. and i feel like we searched a lot of sites etsy ebay um Facebook a lot of different groups, garden centers, garden centers yeah. yeah and like it was we we went through like at least 10 or 15 before we actually found this I think other we spent one maybe about two weeks looking yeah yeah, yeah. and then like yeah we just the once upon we did, it. once we'd agreed that we wanted to get one because yeah. like buying a pet isn't it like we'd agreed that we wanted to get the florida ghost so we did our research to find the perfect one yeah we're plant parents we're plant parents what, what they call it yeah but yeah, I, I I agree with that. Like you know, no knowledge is power. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so like number one, like do your research in regards to like the plant itself, its growing condition, like what is a healthy plant, what to look out for. Like you might, for example, 
see a plant on eBay and it's just like covered in mealybug or scale and you might not know what either of those things are and you might think you're getting a healthy plant but you're just inheriting a problem. Ugh, um, yeah also actually one thing that I noticed in my time looking for the perfect monstera cutting is that like a lot of the cuttings that are sh sold by like and obviously cuttings are mostly just sold by randos they're not sold by like reputable not, not, garden centers yeah, or exactly. nurseries or whatever yeah. so you're kind of taking a chance with that because it's like from someone's house and like god knows what they've got in the house but like most sellers do not show the note and like that's like a red flag for me if mm. it's like this like massive super fenestrated like segmented variegated leaf and then not showing you the node which is like the point where the the cutting was cut from the the main plant yeah. and also like the roots that are there that's a red flag because you don't know what whether that that plant that's going to survive and even just like yeah like you say like not showing a picture of the cutting itself with the node um like there, there are loads of like scams on eBay. You gotta be that's why you gotta be really careful with eBay. You think you're getting a good deal or Etsy, but um, you've really got to do your research in terms of the seller because mm. they can just sell you a wet stick. Like there's been instances on Facebook where like people are getting like long bits of stem and they assume to be like an aloe variegata because it's got like the lovely, you see the variegation, the white, the see, white stripes. Yeah, on there's it. like white stripes where the the um variegation is on the stem, mm -hmm. and. They think they're getting a complete plant for that and they pay like £100 or whatever because it looks really great and they're showing the picture of the mother plant that it's came from. But It's that, just a bit of stem. That, that stem doesn't have a node on it so it doesn't have like the ability to actually grow any roots from that stem. It mm -hmm. needs a node in order to like yeah. grow. Like, so yeah, when you're purchasing with like the intent to kind of get a deal by doing a cutting and propagating those mm -hmm. roots yourself, just be aware that... You know, or you, buying seed even. Or buying seeds. Yes. Oh my gosh! Yeah, appar so many... apparently, apparently, people sell variegated monstera seeds. It's impossible. Which... I mean, okay, okay, okay. It's not impossible, but yeah, a it's lot not. Of these... It's not something <sighs> with a um, alba variegata that is inherited, right? No, no, no. Well, <sighs> okay. we should do this. We should talk about this next time. Okay. We should cut this when, off. When you say the cutting, head. you're inheriting that variegation but i mean in a seed yeah in a seed you don't the the very the characteristics of the mother plant isn't replicated because it's not it's completely random because it's like a, it's like um it's like an apple tree yeah like you take that apple which is like a royal gala you plant the seeds inside the royal gala and t you've got the patience to wait 20 years for that royal gala seed to produce fruit most likely, them them apples which are produced are gonna taste like crap mm -hmm. because the this 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 variety has been cultivated with specific parents and harvested um, and cloned throughout the whole plantation mm -hmm. to produce that specific taste, mm -hmm. and you're just gonna get a bitter apple at the end yeah. of it potentially. I mean, you might, so yeah. but basically, Sorry. the reason why the cuttings work is because it's cloning the plant. It's the same. Yeah, it's yeah. the same plant. It's not a different plant. It's the you same get, plant. Yeah. So from whereas, seeds, you get a genetically whereas, different. Yeah, from seeds, yeah. it's grown with different genes because it's like summary. yeah, it's like grown like a baby, and a baby isn't a clone. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. So yeah, I mean, you essentially chop off the monstera's yeah. arm and it grows a new leg and head and body <laughs> and yeah, that's a clone of you basically. sort of thing yeah. the plants have that amazing ability yeah. to just like grow from like um limbs mm -hmm. but we've been talking about growing variegated plants and cuttings for way too long yeah sorry okay and the point that i wanted to make was <laughs> we got I was talking about the philodendron that we got and we got it for a bit cheaper because it was small it only had about four or five leaves on it and also it was it didn't have any alba leaves and we've taken the time to grow that plant up it has since put on white leaves and then joe put it through a process called air layering where he mm -hmm. um he put soil wrapped soil in cling film around all of the nodes which were kind of producing little aerial root nubbins and sellotaped them on. And what that did is that basically almost like activated the roots and made them kind of grow longer and they're, they're absorbing nutrients and kind of getting acclimatized to the, uh, to the soil yeah. and like ready to do their job. That works because, I mean, in a glasshouse setting, it's a little different. The roots are going to grow quite readily because you've got the humidity in the air but mm -hmm. unfortunately in a, in a house you just don't have that humidity mm -hmm. so wrapping it with 
wrapping a little ball of soil or sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss is ideal because it's got antibacterial properties, but yeah, soil works um, around that. Now it can be clean with clean film, which is really accessible, or like heavier plastic, but like or black plastic. But the benefit of clean film is you can see you can the roots see the developing. Roots developing yeah. yeah, and you know we wrapped the. I say we. You did it. Um, Joe wrapped the roots in soil, and after about a week and a half, we we started seeing the roots like growing really long, and um, yeah. Then after two weeks, today we decided to do the cuttings, and we created five brand new plants, five new Florida ghost plants that because we're taking the time. Actually, I've got one here. I have one here. Um, we're taking the time to um, propagate and grow that we'll have these new ones. Now we took three from green leaves and two from white and one of them had like an extra um, leaf spike growing out of it too. Mm. Yeah, that was really, really interesting. So yeah, um, that one's like looking really good um, and it's like just it's a little lovely plant there. And that's a way to grow your collection as well now. We planted these like um, individually um, just to kind of get them going. And it means that we can keep an eye on them more and respond to their needs more. Whereas if we, it would have been much easier to plant like two or three in one pot and then instantly just have a really nice bushy plant. Yeah, well, the, the hard thing was as well like staking the plant because you don't want it to like move about when you're moving a bit. It, we use like two bamboo canes and then use like a little bit of wire to... Um, so like not pinch it too hard but just like stabilize it keep it upright yeah so yeah it means that we've got these five little plants individually potted that we can look after on their own terms and excuse me i got a hiccup and we can um at some turn point once ten. we can turn them into ten. no um, turn start, them into start ten. an army oh my goodness but yeah like once they start growing as well, like if we wanted to, we can replant them together in one larger pot to create that like nice bushy plant again, like the one we've got here. Um, and because of the cuttings, I believe they'll be just instantly putting on more mature leaves rather than putting on yeah, like yeah, yeah. the juvenile leaves. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I mean, you might get one juvenile leaf. Mm. Um, and the shock leaf. That, that's exactly it. I was just going to say, uh, the you'll get like one or two like shocked leaves from the whole decap uh, decapitation de you were de gonna say i was gonna say yeah i was gonna say decapitation like brutal yeah yeah, yeah like yeah um it was pretty brutal you going at them with them yeah suckers. and yeah once you've taken the cuttings you want to make sure they're in like a nice so like medium light sort of like situation you don't want them in a south facing window or anything yeah so like, we've moved ours into a bookshelf that's like just because you don't want the leaf because the ah see normally cuttings you you don't have the, the you you don't have the benefit of having these nice lovely roots to suck up water normally when i take cuttings in the glass house I have just a single stem and I'm just going to pray that they don't rot. It's like root before you rot. That's what I'm praying for. Yeah. And with these, I've got lovely roots because the worry is, is we've got this massive leaf, like this stupid looking leaf coming out the pot and that's going to, that's going to evaporate mm -hmm. like moisture, like constantly. transpire. And there's constantly. no way for that plant to reabsorb the moisture exactly. because it's got no root system. Yeah, Whereas yeah, yeah. with the air layering, we've created an environment where that node can produce roots that are already capable of absorbing moisture. So when we whack it in, it's only this one stem, but with this giant leaf on it, but it's already got it's a, a system. Start. It's got a head start. So um, it's a much safer way to expand your rare plant collection yeah. more safely. Especially with um, variegated plants, because variegated plants... Again, have, with the variegated plants. <laughs> have, have less chlorophyll in the leaves, so they can't photosynthesize as much. Basically, yeah. Okay. So, so they, they won't grow as fast yeah. as their counterparts. Yeah. So Joe went on a bit of a crazy propagating spree today. Oh yeah, yeah. So I, I call it money saving spree. Is money saving spree? Lauren, um, I cut up Lauren's Raphidophora tetrasperma. She wasn't. And happy. a few other things by the look of it. I was like, let me take one cutting, and then I was like, can I take huge cuttings? Yeah. And, and I took four. Yeah. But they're only one node cuttings. So 
hold on. Before we go into that, okay. Um, I just kind of want to sort of do a recap on all of the points that we've made so far because we've gone on so many different tangents. Yep, you're right. But like, in terms of saving money on increasing your plant collection, and that, that's kind of what we're focused on here, like um, being able to have a healthy and bountiful houseplant collection. Without breaking with, bank. Without breaking the bank. Yeah. Um, and so getting cuttings from eBay, Etsy, Facebook sellers, friends, friends yeah. as well, um, is a great way to do it. Um, buying less desirable plants of varieties that are are popular. Yeah. Because like, they'll be cheaper and they but, with hmm. there's a very good chance that they will um grow on to be that desirable plant that you and, want and even be equally as pretty like you see uh, instagram's just obsessed with like rare aroids uh, sorry aroids at the moment yeah yeah, yeah oh yeah I, I was just trying to word it arums aroids whatever Ar uh, plants from the eraci family and there are plenty of plants which have just like equally as pretty foliage mm. but are just like and extremely common like the fitonia for example oh have you have you got it? This is Fetonia albivensis. Oh my god, what did you do to the Fetonia? I propagated it. Oh my god, Joe. So this has got lovely... It looks anemic. No, it doesn't. So... I told you I don't think it's going to focus. We can... I'll, you know, tell you what, I'll insert some photos. Good idea. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so this has got some lovely pink foliage, like veination in the leaves. Mm. This isn't... A desirable Instagram plant. It's really easy to care for, and you can pick it up at any Home Depot, so like Home Base, B and Q, you for can like buy, less than ten pounds. You can literally five pound. buy um, Fetonias and Waitrose. Yeah, <laughs> like I see they're in the doorway every time we go into Waitrose. Or well, you can buy Waitrose Fetonia for like thirty pounds in a terrarium. In a terrarium, <laughs> which is just a mistake. Don't buy a thirty-pound glass jar with a two-pound to like Petonia exactly. in because the Petonias are worth like two quid and you they trigger me every time I see them yeah but that's another thing uh, with saving money is like if you if you like deduce the cost of the plants inside these expensive terrariums that you can buy from different shops you can often buy the pieces for a fraction of the price like mm. the Petonias are like two three pound each and they're sold in terrariums like that are completed for like much more so because you're getting that like complete effect like mm. someone's went through the bother of yeah so yeah. so yeah saving money be smart be smart. Do you want to show your little glass of horrors? It's not a glass of horrors, it's a glass of... I'll insert um, some photos of this afterwards okay. as well. So, no, don't um... hold it up. Don't bother holding it up. Okay. Well, okay. I'll, I'll... I'll just explain what's in it. Yeah. So we've got a lot of Refidophora tetraspermum, which is the variegated... Sorry. The mini Monstera, the... sometimes it's called. A Monstera, Monstera minima. minima. Jinx. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Nice penetrations on there. I propped loads of the Fetonias as well. The last time you tried to propagate Fetonias, they all died. So this will be interesting. Actually, I didn't... Okay, okay, okay. We can edit that out, can't we? <laughs> I've got a Scandapsis aureum or Golden Pothos. Devil's Ivy. Devil's Ivy, yeah. Um, and... That's in that jar of Horus, right? No, jar of beautiful plants. So yeah, each each one of these like they're like single node cuttings on the on the mini monstera. There you go. I'll I'll put in photos after. You don't Sing need to hold it up. Okay. You well, it's just I think it's interesting because like just how small a thing yeah. will actually create a new plant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what we're hoping is that these will all produce roots and we'll be able to plant them into soil and make some new plants and we'll be able to gift them to friends um, and family Water as well. propagation is such an easy, carefree uh, propagation method as well. It doesn't... Please be careful because you were going to okay. totally pour that all Thank over you. the I'm going to put this down. Yeah, I don't think it's safest for everyone if you put it down. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a really easy, carefree so like propagation method. No mess. Although it doesn't come without its drawbacks sort of thing mm -hmm. um, with expensive plants. It's like the, the go-to method for propagation, but honestly... It's dicey. Yeah, it, it's like hit and miss. This is cost-saving, however. So... Yes. Yeah. Propagate your plants. Give them to friends. Like, trade. Do trades. Yeah, and that... that, that... And you can join houseplant groups on Facebook. So that was going to they... be my next point, which is once you have um, figured out how to 
make cuttings safely, propagate your expensive plants. If they're expensive, they don't have to be expensive. Um, and you get these cuttings, which give you five more plants. There's a lot of places online that you can do plant trades for. Um, or even just sell even, them right or out. Or even just sell them outright, yeah. yeah. And or give them to friends. Like if your friend has always wanted like a, a fancy fancy subtropical plant but yeah. isn't being in a position to pay the money for it nice cheap birthday present right? nice cheap birthday present i yeah. mean i mean well thought out and like from the heart yeah we're not cheapskates sorry guys <laughs> hope, every, hope everyone's ready to have some house plants for every christmas and birthday coming up for the next we live in london lauren we've got to like save money somehow yeah that's true i don't think anyone's blaming us but yeah so <laughs> um and do that and you know, one thing that we did recently as well is that we've got these pillars. Oh my goodness! Well, we've got we're down to one main big pillar now because uh, we the big daddy, the big daddy, the big mama, big mama, because we um, have been constantly like propagating the pillar babies, which is like a thing that if anyone has owned one of these plants knows that they just like constantly pop off, and. Um, so we've planted a bunch of them, but also uh, we went to a friend's house a few weeks ago and we traded uh, the pillia and... Did we take them succulents as well? I can't remember. Yeah, I think you did bring Cause succulent Because I'm like constantly growing succulents. Like my succulents are just like dropping off and just producing it's new like, plants It's like you look at them and they have dropped like four I know, leaves. I know, like... <laughs> it literally is. Like I have so many succulents and because of lockdown, I haven't been able to give them to anyone. But yeah, what do we come back with? A linear, a, was it Hoya linearis? Yeah, 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 Hoya linearis. And linearis. what's the other and, one? And uh, River Salis, which R is like a type of cat's eye. Yeah, so we've got these two nice plants from one of our friends who um, had propagated them herself and we did a nice plant trade so um i like i'm really looking forward to doing more plant trades because we'll get stuff that we like didn't really expect and it'll be great to see other people take home the plants that we've like really cared for and like looked after and ha find nice new homes see them on instagram one day see them on instagram one day <laughs> all grown up <laughs> but yeah like i think that those are all really, really nice ways of being part of this community and not breaking the bank. Yeah, it's just about really not getting sucked into it. Like, there's so much hype revolving houseplants and, like, prestige and, like... And just realise, like, in two or three years' time, like, the nurseries catch mm -hmm. on to these trends mm -hmm. and they, they make them dirt cheap. Like, for example, we were just talking about the Pilia peperomioides mm -hmm. or the Chinese money plant. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to propagate, but both in the UK and most recently in the US, like the US, like, three years ago, three to four years ago, like, this was a really desirable plant and it was going for, like, $50. $50 That's a it. It plant. makes me laugh. To think, it's like, like how, pounds, how many pounds. plants we've made out of that that plant and people would buy it for £50 pounds be when it... it it's like... because the this, this supply didn't meet demand. Yeah. Like, it was... Inc and now, because all the chain stores like Walmart and stuff are on it and they realise this trend and desire, mm -hmm. they're literally, like, dirt cheap now. You can buy one for, like, $5. Like, it's incredible mm. just how fast these trends go down. And yeah. they're doing the same with Monstera alba variegata at the moment in the Thailand nurseries and the Mon Monstera Thai constellation. Yeah. There's thousands of them. And it just takes a little while for the them DS plants for the for to the catch market up. to catch up. That's yeah. exactly it. Yeah, it's just being patient. Yeah. Like, that's one thing that I saw is like, uh, I've watched a lot, <laughs> I watch a lot of YouTube. So um, <laughs> we've watched quite a few like nursery tours and stuff like that on YouTube. And, you know, you can kind of see that, like what they're growing. It's like, you know, people saying that like the Florida ghost as well is one of them and the pink princess. It's like the nurseries are on it. They're growing them. So like next year, maybe year after whenever there's going to be a big flood of these and they're going to totally lose their value. Um, so there's no point of... Well, no, there's no. That means uh, not to say it that there's makes no. Makes you feel good. Not yeah, not to say that there's no point in spending like X amount of m money on the plant that you want right now because if you can afford it, absolutely, that is your prerogative. Um, we're not trying to say don't spend money on plants. We're just trying to give tips. Trying to give tips to make to engage with it in a more affordable way if that's if you know if that's what you want to do. So, like, yeah. if waiting, like, six months, a year, a year and a half, two years to get that perfect plant that 
means that like you don't have to sacrifice anything else like just know that if you keep an eye on what nurseries are growing that'll be coming like oh my gosh like um what was that camo plant that we were talking about today aglaonema tricolor picta sorry yeah. Ag aglaonema tricolor yeah i can't believe how expensive that plant is i swear i've seen that in so many videos on youtube so many people have it i assumed it was just like a normal plant and then and then vicky was like yeah it's like 200 quid and i was like what what and i guarantee they're growing that in nurseries and it'll be like boom everywhere mm. i'm not in home base they're very slow to catch up that's true but they do have petonias, so I love them. <laughs> They're just so aesthetic. <laughs> it's just so cheap and aesthetic. Yeah, and I love like... petonias. And they come in so many different colours. Like, there's, like, a lemony one, which is, like, this beautiful, like, lime lemon veining with these really lovely minty green leaves. And it's just so pretty. Yeah. So a really important thing that we've discussed and haven't really... Personally, for us, we haven't encountered this because I'm a, f a professional in the field sort of thing. Mm. Uh, I've always been like looking after Lauren a bit, but you've you learned so fast. Oh my god! But basically, what I'm trying to get to is that plant care in itself is a very tricky and troublesome process, and it's best to go slow into mm -hmm. your the number of plants that you start and give yourself room to learn. Room, uh, yeah, yeah. You got to give yourself room to learn because the thing is, is you've got to you buy these ten plants going on to like to get that aesthetic look on your window and you feel compelled to do so sort of thing. But these plant, these 10 plants have all different water requirements and you'll waste money by not actually sort of like knowing how to care for them properly. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you buy a cheap succulent and look after that, you'll slowly learn how to look after it and how to water it, how not to kill it, what to look out for in terms of pests before you have a full-blown infestation or on all of the plants that you've just bought from you, the garden center you've just bought this incredible aglaonema tricolor for 100 200 pounds and it dies in two weeks because you didn't notice that it was suffering from root rot from day one because the the seller you bought it from and um, put it in like a really moisture retentive soil mm -hmm. and it needs a free draining soil exactly yeah. so yeah it's and this all this stuff that you get from experience mm -hmm. that a lot of people kind of taking for granted that like it's easy to look after plants mm. or like you're expected to just like adapt to it immediately yeah 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 i think that's totally right you will save yourself so much money in the long run if you if you work with like one plant at a time and you know work up from there learning how to look after it because everyone's got that story of like oh my god i, ca I could kill a cat i killed cactuses i killed succulents and i was there like imagine if i just like instead of buying those succulents a you few years ago i just bought do you know what i mean i just bought cuttings of monsteras or i just bought like god i like i don't even know what's an expensive plant i just bought a pink princess or something like that yeah, yeah, and yeah. i've got it in this soil like you say and i think i need to water every day and it's like why is it dying yeah, and yeah. it's because you just don't know and there's no shame in that like we're not trying to mystify this hobby and we're not trying to like say that just the uh, Scooter Olympics outside our window again. <laughs> um, and we're not trying to say that like, um, it's hard because it's not, but it just takes time and learning, like and, like yeah. getting into anything. And not, not just through books and websites sort of thing, but just know, learning to sort of like, notice small morphological changes in, is in the plants. Like, oh, that's, I've overcomplicated that's it again. Word. Okay, but basically like you'll see it wilting and you may not notice it wilting. You might just think that's a natural occurring thing, but through like multiple sessions of seeing this and then watching it and then notice it per cup, you'll, you'll find out from through like empirical evidence that this is like the right thing to do. We're trying to demystify this and he's using all these scientific terms, but basically by <laughs> watching your plant and seeing what it does and how it reacts to stuff, you'll get to know what it likes and what it doesn't like. Exactly. And um, yeah, like it's, um, it is a process, but you know. It's a fun process. It's, it's a fun it's a process. journey. It's, and it is a journey. And it definitely. feels like such an achievement when you, like you, you know best because Okay. I know best because I failed so many times. <laughs> yeah, because you because I turned your you turned your green th your black thumb into a green one. Yeah, I did. I suppose so. Yeah. You. Were... I brought your tenanthi back to life. Yeah, 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 you did really well. But I mean, when you're first starting out, how many plants, how many succulents did you kill, Lauren? 
we don't talk about the the battlefield that all of those succulents died on. Those pro- poor rotted propagations. So that, you that was a war. It oh wasn't a battlefield. Gosh. Yeah, it was awful. But you it know, like, it was like the Sengoku period of plants. It was. It was just like that. Except the, it was instead it of was a thousand bad, years though, because like the soil that like this is slight tangent, but like. I had this like propagation station that was obviously meant for like growing little bits of veg and stuff. It's not meant for succulents, which are supposed to dry out. And I had them all laying on this moist soil. So they're all rotting into the soil. And I'm like, oh, well, another batch. Mix the rotted, the rotting, decomposing succulent leaves into the soil. Which have and, fungi and stuff. And start again with another layer. And it's like, ah. <sighs> You learn, though. And yeah, I mean, it's the enthusiasm which matters. And it's nice to be able to experiment with cheaper plants and just going in mm-hmm. there full, full whack sort of thing. Definitely, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, take it at your own pace. You might just be a whiz and just be able to be like, yeah, oh, that's yeah. me. Bum, 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 bum. Watch them grow. Yeah, yeah. And I've killed my, a fair few plants at work as well. Like, it's a learning process. Because yeah. like... How, how, when you've got like so many plants with different water requirements from different environments and like the cultivation methods mm-hmm. of this like obscure cultivar yeah. or subspecies just isn't known. Yeah. You just need to learn along with the plant. I've also got another thought as well, which is the, the Instagram room myth. Okay. And like this, the, the second I learned this was a myth was, um, it changed my whole perception of looking at instagram photos and people's houses and plants and stuff which is you see these gorgeous rooms that are just filled to the brim with plants on every surface over under tvs like in crevices like all this kind of stuff in these photos and i'm like why can't we put plants in the corner why can't we put plants in this place a plant would look so beautiful on the shelf and whatever and it's like well it can't live there because there's no light and it needs light to feed itself and to Mm. grow and the second i realized that all of these photos are staged because mm. they they can't live there. There's no way a plant could look that healthy and live in such a dark space or such a space so far away from sunlight. Um, it and not, may, not look heatulated uh, or like... Yeah, like the Instagram myth. This will save you so much money as well because you realise that these these rooms and these, um, like these photos are just not attainable because there's literally no way to keep all these plants alive. And like we've said before, like you can rotate plants in and out, but that's not what's being shown and that's not what's being set as the standard Mm. and i think like debunking the idea that it has to be this way or it has to be that way and you or or it's not looking good is like really important because it makes it more accessible at that stage yeah and yeah like to to go to grow on that we like knowing what aspect your house is what facing your windows are Mm. it was really helpful in deciding what plants are suitable for your home mm-hmm. like if you've got these like the fa- most table aspects in the uk or northern hemisphere is a southern facing aspect because it gets the sun most of the day and that means you can grow a wide variety of plants maybe not ferns but like you can acclimatize them but anyway knowing that you have like a like a north aspect for example which gets less light in the day it gets mm-hmm. more light in the winter but less light during the most important growing season you aren't going to grow something which requires that like intense light like mm-hmm. a cactus for example like it's going to struggle it's going to struggle in the winter without without any sort of like excess lighting mm. yeah yeah exactly and so-, so like yeah you the point i was trying to make was like if you know you've got a north facing window and um you're not going to put plants right at the back of the room because the sunlight just isn't going to reach it. You might be able to get away with that in a south-facing window aspect, but probably not. Yeah, but you still have to think about um, the light levels that that plant requires. But I think this is a conversation for another time, really, which is Definitely. kind of like setting up your room and acclimatizing yeah. plants because um, ultimately I just wanted to touch on the point that like these rooms aren't real. There's no way that that's like that all the time. And there's no way that those plants can live comfortably like that without someone who is, um, you know, really in tune with what those plants need and is transferring them in and out of and has reasonable like, sunlight. Yeah, like either transferring from windowsill to windowsill, just have supplementary lighting, like T5 light bulbs, like yeah, grow, grow lights. lights. Grow yeah, lights, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so I think that that kind of covers everything that I wanted to I think that's share. a really good point, though, because like, yeah, you see all the, yeah, yeah, I think that's a really great point. 
but yeah, hopefully the uh, the points that we've kind of crossed, I know we rambled on a lot on this one, but we had a lot to say. We really should have just, should we talk about variegation next time? I don't know. Or like chimera plants or like mutations or something. I don't know. That's a conversation for next time. But anyway, hopefully this was useful um, and we've kind of demystified plant buying a little bit and helped people understand you know there's many many ways to grow a collection and it doesn't always have to be buying expensive plants from nurseries um or garden centers um yeah so if you have any more questions about anything we've touched on then feel free to leave a comment um and we'll we'll get joe to reply because i probably won't be able to reply and um you can get in touch with us on instagram as well which is plant underscore quest on instagram and on twitter as well actually there's a mm -hmm. plant underscore quest on yep. twitter as well yeah and we'll see you next time i suppose see you next time bye bye of conversations about the i know that's why i've put a it's like spare um, trays, you know. Oh, is that right? Let me go get a tray for him. In the <laughs> bottom of... We're bucket. having a philodendron emergency. It's dripping got everywhere. One got one leaky boy. Ah. Why didn't either of us anticipate this? I did, that's why it, I Literally that. dripping onto my Xbox. It's okay for your PlayStation. <laughs> it's okay for you, isn't it? It's just... I mean... You put it on the table. Oh, it... oh, 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 victim blaming. Oh, goodness. It did. It was wet, isn't it? Yeah. Because um, you put it there and there was a big puddle on there. So, and, I, and I had to move all right, it. Alright, alright. I'm not blaming you. I'm just right. telling you what the situation right. was. I'm just telling you what the situation was. The situation. The situation was that you put it on I feel the... Like the situation is... I felt attacked. You're a fool of dendron. That's what you are. No! You can't use my punts against me! I'm too powerful. You are, I've made you too powerful. Yeah. Okay. It only took three years. <laughs> that perfect dendron that you wanted, grab that. And do you know what I mean? And um, I think... We'll be right back. Really lengthy. Exactly. There is a reminder for Franz. <laughs> That's our um, reminder to turn the... Um, freezer back on because our freezer is so noisy we have to turn it off when we record well we'll wrap this one up anyway so oh, um hey google set a reminder for one hour to turn the fridge back on on the back okay today at 8 35 pm Take to get this reminder three. on an iphone you'll need to download the google assistant oh my, app okay thanks google <laughs> take three thanks for nothing google